Also, having the opportunity to tell you a bit about uh, some things I, I have been working with my PhD student on this morning. Uh, so, let me start by telling you the main theorem I want to tell you. Uh, to do that, uh, for any group like this, I will write uh, simply G between brackets for the uh, associated or orbit differential stack. And then our main theorem reads as follows. Basically, what we do is to classify stacky vector bundles. So, so, so we found the object that classifies these vector bundles. Uh, let me call them a category five Grassmannians, by obvious reasons. So, what we have is that BV group of of a homological rank PQ over G correspond to maps of two stacks uh, from G to this object. I will tell you about. So we have this correspondence and I will get into details along the talk, but for now let me just mention some, mention some remarks. The first one is that, uh, well, this is the category of Grassmannians, this GLPQ. So it is a, a two stack. I'm going to get into details of what the two stack is, but basically it's, a, let's say, the geometry a, behind a, the transverse geometry of a Lee two group point. And this a, is basically a, represented by a finite, dimen finite dimensional Uh, lead to group boy GLPQ, very concrete. Ah. And to give you uh, an idea of this, well, this is like a geometric differ differential geometry version of the perf complex, perf stack, sorry, that appears in the work of Toven and Bakke, where they say, okay, uh, the perfect complexes or, uh, can be classified by some stack. No? Um, their main result is like, okay, uh, this is locally geometric, uh, etc. But they work in a different framework, as like geometry and, and very general setting. This should be understood as a differential geometric version of that result in a very particular situation, which we are working with uh, two degrees no? and, and a differential stack. Okay? But the, the result we have is, is uh, uh, much stronger. Uh, we have a global model for it, and it's a very concrete one. So, but in any case, it should be related with a perf complex, perf stack uh, of time in Bakke. Something else I can tell you for now. Okay, uh, 
I don't want to spend much time on this, just saying that when p equals zero, uh, for instance, uh, the group is just a manifold, this recovers the classic classification. What does it mean? That uh, when p equals zero and this is a manifold, this is just a vector bundles over the manifold, and they correspond to maps from the manifold, map of stacks from the manifold to GL0Q. GL0Q is the general linear group. Okay. Um, view as a, as a stack, it's a finite dimensional model for the gas manifolds. Okay. Um, uh, I will get more into details then of what is this, but it's basically the derived category of BB groupoids of a co cohomological rank P and Q. But uh, an application, fundamental application, this is some work in progress. So there is much to be done here. But basically, I mean, along the lines of what Maria was uh, telling us yesterday, well, this opens up the opportunity to de de define and work with uh, characteristic classes for stacky vector bundles. Okay. Every time I have a stacky vector bundle represented by a BB groupoid, let's say the class of this, it will correspond a map from G to GLPQ, and this will give me in cohomology a map the other way around. So, if this is a map induced by gamma, it's just induced by the map induced by gamma. So, we will call this ring the Bosch Schumann cohomology of this concrete little group, the universal algebra of characteristic classes of TV. Of, of stacky vector bundles, okay? And um, it's something we have to do yet is to understand it better. I mean, we can identify some classes, but uh, this is something still in progress. So, yes. just make sure I understand the question. When you have this PQ, yeah. is it, should I think about like representations of length two, which in cohomology is the zero cohomology has rank Q and the first cohomology has rank P. Exactly. At most P and at most Q. Is it, is it like the rank of E and the rank of the core or something? Or? The rank of the core and E, yes. let's call them P prime and Q prime. Right. Okay. And then the core anchor map, I, I will get into this, but let's say that it has a vari varying rank. Uh, you look at the minimum rank of this. You subtract it, and then you, you will get P and Q. Okay. So if you look at in cohomology degree 1 and 0, it's yeah. a maximum dimension, maximum dimension you will get. I think you are telling us also that that uh, one one correspondence on the right upper side is the higher version of the fact that rank R vector bundles are classified by homotopy classes of maps from the base to GLR, to exactly. G Grassmannian R. Exactly. But there, R is for rank R, not for vector bundles of rank less or equal than R. Yeah, but I mean, if you want it, uh, there is a, an issue, a little issue with this, that is a following. Uh, the, we will get into it when we see this, but there is no problem with that. Okay? It's a particular case of this theory. The point is that inside here, uh, you have a, the, the objects are differentials that you can put from RP to RQ. And the, 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 there, is this, there is a distinguished point that is zero. And when P is zero, there is only one point here and it's zero. Okay? So every time you have a, a map that pass through zero, uh, you will get the actual P and Q. Okay? The problem is that in principle, this map may, may don't have zero in the image. And that's why you have to be less, less or equal. Okay, but in degree, but for this case, uh, you recover the plastic result. Okay. 
There's no problem. Okay? We will get into details later. But, uh, okay. This is like a lot of difficult words for some of you and some very particular cases for some others. So I don't know. Hope to be able to entertain both of you. <laughs> uh, so first, I'm going to talk about a uh, lead to group voice. Okay, I will say a bunch of things about lead to group voice. So the first one is what what a lead to group voice is. What do I mean by lead to group voice? So a lead to group voice is a lead to category and what does it mean? Uh, it means the following, that I have G2, G1, uh, G0 it's a double groupoid those that were appearing in the mini course of Soprano but with the previous side no? so we think of a uh, the usual picture is, is this one, G, H, alpha, X, Y. So you have three levels of structures, no? objects, arrows, and two cells, arrows between arrows. Okay? Um, what I mean is that uh, what a category is, what you need a uh, source, target, unit, and multiplication, and all this needs to be smooth. Okay? So it's a little category to start with, and then I want all two sets and arrows to be invertible, but in the following way. First, th there are two conditions. The first one is that the uh, two cells are invertible, and I can say this just by say that G2, G1 is a Lie groupoid, so I do have inverses for that. But the second condition is that arrows are invertible up to home, let's say. And um, how this translates? Uh, well, in the case of uh, Lie group boys, this is something I was working out with in a, in a previous paper with uh, David Stefani. Uh, basically, you can build the second step of the nerve, which is basically triangles which commute up to homotopy. This is a manifold. And then I can, I can project um, pairs of arrows like this. Um, these are two manifolds defined by fiber products. And what I demand is that this map, this restriction map or this, is a surjective submersion. Okay? So then, uh, sorry, this is K. So if you replace K by an identity, this is telling you that uh, every time I have G, I will have a, a quasi-inverse, but I can also do it uh, for uh, sets of paths, whatever. So these are the two conditions. And the examples... Uh, the following, for instance, manifolds where there are only trivial two cells and, and arrows, uh, D group points where there are only trivial two cells. There are a uh, double D group points with a trivial side, which are a uh, Strict lead to group points. Uh, in these cases, every arrow is invertible. Okay, so the, the G, G1, G0 is a lead group, group point. But this is too strong for us. We will see the example. But then, uh, if you get an abelian group, like S1 or whatever, you can see it as a lead to group point where the horizontal and vertical composition of two cells agree. They are just the, the addition. 
And there is a single object and a single arrow. And this is very important, for instance, when working with uh, gems. I'm giving a five-dimensional model for it, to classify gems. But uh, let's go to the most important example for me, is the following. So I fix P and Q, greater or equal than zero, okay? Uh, numbers, no, and um, integers. And then the general linear to group point GLPQ has the following. Has <coughs> objects are a uh, map, let's say, from RP to RQ, which are delta parcels, no? These are uh, matrices, no? P, uh, P times Q matrices. So then arrows, well, I want a commutative squares. So this is like a delta to delta prime. I have two matrices and two equations I will impose. One, this commutes. And there is an open condition also that is a quasi isomorphism from partial to partial prime. Okay, so in cohomology, uh, phi has to be an isomorphism. Okay, and it is very interesting that uh, if you only impose a closed condition, it's not a Lie groupoid, a Lie two groupoid, but uh, with the two of them, it is. And the two cells are uh, chain homotopies. which again are just matrices from RQ to RP, which act on any uh, commutative square. So adding up uh, to phi uh, H partial plus uh, partial H. No? So chain homotopies, you can think this as uh, matrices acting on GLPQ1. And in fact, this is the general linear to groupoid. And I proved uh, with Davide that this is in fact a little groupoid. And you see that we want maps phi, which are not invertible. We need them. So that's why the, the stronger notion of imposing every arrow to be invertible does not work. Okay? Is, uh, our option is an example of something else. Okay. And this is the lead to groupoid that uh, is going to model the category of mm -hmm. manis. So it's a matter of computing the cohomology, Boltzmann cohomology of this finite dimensional option. Okay. Um, another remark is that, uh, of course, there is yet another definition of lead to groupoid that I am avoiding. That is, uh, I will say, weak lead to groupoids, which are uh, higher groupoids, implicit manifolds that define horn filling co uh, condition, which is strict for, for horns over two. And well, these are the, the weak lead to groupoids. What is the point? That uh, for each lead to groupoid, I can compute the nerve. And the nerve is a simplicial manifold, and if this is a little groupoid, it's going to be a weak little groupoid. Again, this is a work done with a Davide, who basically left math because of the Carioca Carnival, so you should be careful. <laughs> You may experience different things. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but so the orbits of these are are the 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 rank of the, the rank, rank exactly. Rank. You have a yeah minimum of p q plus one uh, number of orbits. And what is the nerve? Uh, on degree zero, it's just g zero. On degree one, it's g one. You have source target. And on degree two, you have to put the triangles which are commutative up to uh, 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 to cell. 
in general, the equation for the nerve on degree k are the lax functor from, from k, viewed as a category, to, to g. I won't get into more details. It's something that you can do, but uh, there is a theorem also here that says that for a little groupoid, you get a weak little groupoid. In fact, if you compute the nerve for a little category, it's not going to be a simplicial manifold in general. There might be singularities. Um, but in this case, it works well. So, but there is a first to higher group points through the nerves directly. So, the higher group point is a simplicial manifold. Exactly. Of blood. So, a little group point is it a simplicial manifold? Some, Some sort of connection, no? Because you have a multiplication. In a weak oh, little group point. structure. Yeah. In a weak little group point, uh, you don't have a composition. You have to choose like a coordinates, which would be a feeling for the horn, and then take the, the other side. Okay, so the answer is yes, intuitively, but in practice there is no precise. You cannot give a definition using simplicial. Yes, I, I, I don't know, I don't think so. I mean, okay. but you see that our chain uh, maps, quasi isomorphism, uh, can be composed. I mean, there is a composition which is just multiplication of matrices. I'm not criticizing you, I'm trying to understand. No, no, I'm, I'm complimenting, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's okay. <laughs> uh, but then, okay, uh, what is, I can tell you, definition for little groupoids, some, some examples, the main example, relation with other definitions, the strong definition, the weak definition, this is something intermediate, what else do I need to say? Well, I don't know if you call this a theorem, but I will put just our names. <laughs> <laughs> there is another issue with this uh, uh, higher group points. I mean, they define orbits on the manifold. And are these orbits some manifolds? Do they define a foliation? Juridically, yes, because you can differentiate the, the higher group point to a higher algebra and then you have some bracket and impulsivity, etc. But uh, we proved that these guys, uh, in fact, have uh, orbits which are manifolds, that they define foliation, singular foliation, and moreover, that it is locally a Lie group point, meaning that the, the, the own group points are, are smooth. So, given a G a Lie to group point, um, x, y in G0, then first the orbit, so the subset of G0 of points connected by x uh, with x are submanifolds. Uh, not necessarily embedded in general, and they define a singular foliation. And then the uh, home group points are basically uh, G2, Y, X. I always think of the arrows going the other direction, but not these ones. No, the, the ones that are inside. So these guys are in fact uh, Lie group points, smooth, regular. No? and with uh, Avidian isotopy, let's say. But uh, there is an heuristic proof of this, as I was saying, that is, okay, differentiate the Lie group point, the Lie to group, we get the Lie to algeroid. Yeah. Were you asking? No, 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 sorry, no. But, and then? The analog of the isotropy groups, like, uh, what can I think about the isotropy for these Lie to group points? Well, that's a point. Uh, now, it's becoming more evident, at least for me, maybe for some other people, that this characterization of, of a Morita morphism is like a whitehead theory. Uh -huh. Somehow, you demand a, a map to induce isomorphism on the homotopy groups. Group of a, a simplicial theoretical, group of theoretical homotopy groups. So the pi zero is your orbit space. And the pi two is the isotropy of these guys, which is a billion. And the pi one is the orbit space of these guys. Okay. Um, 
but but I will get more into this later. There are things that are still want to understand, but in principle we have this. Heuristic, I was saying, is differentiation. And our proof mimics somehow the, the case of Lie groupoids, developing the notion of uh, normal representations here. <coughs> so what we show is that by using these uh, properties, we can show that the target source, the anchor map, is a uh, of constant rank, and then the image is locally a manifold, and it's the orbit, whatever. But then we have this. Uh, this holds for higher groupoids, higher groupoids, no? Because uh, we don't use that it's a little group, it, it's enough to, to apply the nerve, and um, we show this. For, I don't know, is this, no? That, uh, yeah? I think you can prove that for any n groupoid, g0, g1, gn, g1 over g0 is an android that is scandalized by a submersion. I could take the singular foliation of the kernel of ts plus kernel of tt, you show it's closed on the Libra. I mean, here, this is not a, a, a Lie groupoid. You're, you're talking yeah. about different types of n groupoids, yeah. I think. But just one, just one thing, Colin, but you, you give an answer that. I don't think what Marius was asking, but uh, if you, I mean, there are classical isotropy groups for these, yeah. which are lead to groups, right, or not? Yeah, if you want. In fact, I'm trying to be fancy uh, here, but if you set y equals x, it's enough, it's the same result, and what you get is a lead to group, okay? But you want to say x is not the group itself, right? It's a monoid. Uh, G1 xx is a, what is called a lead to group, but again, uh, you have to be careful because not every arrow is invertible on the nose. Right. But uh, I think it's for some definition, it's a lead to group, it's accepted. Okay. But, uh, so let me move into the next stage. But uh, I don't know, uh, Camille, there was a no, comment? No, maybe I confused. Okay. I, I think this will become the useful of this will become apparent now. Because uh, I want to talk about a uh, difference of two stars. Of course, we can say is a, a, you can comp uh, build a higher group which is modeled by hypercovers, you have a higher stacks, and then take those models by weak to group points, and this is a model. Uh, here I'm talking about a more diff alternative one. I'm pretty sure they, they agree. But that's a, the following. I have two lead to group points. And then what, what the lax factor is, a lax factor from G to G prime uh, well, consists of maps at the level of objects uh, arrows and two cells, which preserve multiplication unit, source target, etc., plus an extra map measuring the failure of associativity, if you want. So you can see this as a map that goes from G1 times G1 to G2 prime. And what is this? Is measuring if you have a H and G to composable arrows, then you get phi G, phi H, phi G, phi H, phi of the composition, and here you get a canonical way to connect them, which is phi 1, 1 applied to HG. Okay? So these are last factors. We need them. Um, a remark is that uh, the nerve defined over there makes these maps to, to correspond with uh, simplicial maps between the nerves. So another way would be to say just that uh, it's a simplicial map between the nerves. No? Let's see. 
say ng, ng prime, and a simple shell map. So now here is our definition for, for equivalence between two group boys. So we say phi from g to g prime, a large functor is a morita or equivalence, as you wish, if two conditions. First, it has to meet transversally every orbit, every g prime orbit. Every g prime orbit transversally. And uh, when I look at it locally, from g y x to g prime y x, phi y phi x is morita. I'm running out of jokes. So this is our definition. It, it means transversally every orbit. Uh, and it is locally monitor. And a remark I want to do is that even for one group voice, this uh, agrees with the other definition, but also simplifies it. We all know that, okay, a morita morphism or a weak equivalence between group voice has to be smoothly fully faithful and smoothly sensory subjective. What I'm saying is that forget about the smoothness in fully faithfulness. It's enough to be fully faithful. And the smooth, the smoothness in the sensory subjective is just meeting every orbit transversely. Just that. So, I can. So what else? Uh, here we have a theorem which says the following. This definition we are putting here uh, relates with uh, some others that are in the, in the literature. Okay? So let's say that uh, G, G prime, uh, there are two parts. First, if G and G prime are a, uh, I want to say, sorry. If I have G F from G to G prime such that phi zero is a subjective submersion, then phi is morita if and only if number phi is a hypercover in the sense studied, for instance, by Chen Chang. And another, so in the case of which it is a trace of motion, we apply the nerve and it corresponds. But then, if G and G prime are strict, phi from G to G prime is strict. Oh. So this uh, last functor is actually a two functor. And phi zero is a subjective submersion. Then phi is morita. If only if when you look at the map from uh, G to the pulver, let's say G two G one to the pulver which is something you can define here, is Morita. And this is a definition that appears, for instance, by uh, uh, Matthew Stieren and Greg Sorry, Matthew, there is a question in the chat. Yeah. Is there an explicit infinitesimal version of the theory? I have just seen it, so I don't know. It means, look at, do you mean, this part or the previous part of differential to stacks? Uh, let me just write this. I mean, 
I know very little about differentiating higher groupoids. I'm pretty sure Chen Chang in his talk is going to address this problem. Um, but, so you see, our definition is kind of a, a, quite simple to compute in, in, in examples, no? and it's equivalent to the others, and it adapts to our framework. So, some examples of this. Well, you can put the general linear groupoid adding plus one plus one, just mapping a differential to the differential plus identity. Okay? And then uh, you get a way to see this inside there. And this is not going to be an equivalence, it's not essentially subjective, because it's missing exactly the zero. But if you drop away the zero, it is a, a morita morphism. You can check this easily. But uh, more in general, if you put here an open where the rank is greater than the, the, the rank of the of the differential is greater than let's say R, and here greater than R plus one, then it's an equivalence. Okay. Is a meets transversely every orbit and is locally. Yeah, can I ask you one thing? Yeah. Uh, in this equivalence, so if you start with the, your lead two groupoids, you take the nerve, and if you now do uh, an hypercover to another weak lead two groupoid, in general, that will not come from a, a lead two groupoid. Yeah. That's that issue. Let me check the time. Is related to the fact of whether if the two uh, models for two stacks are the same. No, I would say theoretically they are the same. Um, I can tell you an idea of what is that. You can strictify any weak to groupoid. Uh, if you, for a moment, forget about the smoothness, taking the let's say the pi two, which is basically a, a new two groupoid that you you build up to a weak one which has the same objects, paths of arrows, and classes of homotopies. This is a strict, I have a concatenation juxtaposition, and it's some sort of partial converse, and I hope to show that these two models are equivalent. But in any case, okay. uh, this works for now. Uh, so, other example, important example. What I mean by strict is when they are double group points, is that what you mean? When they are, uh, yeah, exactly, the, every arrow uh, is invertible and not up to homotopy. This simple definition, which you say you have a diagram of double groupoids with a trivial side. side. Okay? Oh, with a trivial side, right? Yeah. And then, uh, so another example. That's why I moved here because I think it's a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for instance, if uh, you have a lead to groupoid, okay, and an open cover of the units, so please think of this as a disjoint union of opens, okay. So then you have the the pullback groupoid to groupoid, which is basically a disjoint union of the opens. G1, UJ, UI, Dijon Union, and here you have the Dijon Union of G2, UJ, UI. So this is what I call GU. It's a little groupoid, there is a canonical projection to G, and it's a, a, again an equivalence. Okay? Uh, um, so, I will leave it, yeah. Could you do this just with the submersion instead of this? Like yeah, a, you can do it with submersion and, and yeah. In yeah, fact, the only thing you need is to meet transversally the orbits. Yeah, just that. If you do it for a submersion, you really need to generate an equivalent, not just work with this kind of equivalence. This. Because this is not an equivalence relation, you have to generate. Exactly. 
Exactly. It's the same thing. I think for the most part, really need more data equivalents, not just more data maps like this. Yeah. And to pass from the not uh, surjective to a surjective, you can do some play, some game with a vibration replacement, like in topology, taking uh, the homotopy fiber product. No, but <coughs> this works well. Yeah. So, so Rupois, there is the alternative, very simple description of the equivalence. Yeah. To Rupois, the harmonic equivalence, if there is the manifold in yeah. between, no actions, such that the pullback groupoid are diffeomorphic. Yeah. No actions, no by one. Yeah. Right? Is that the case here as well? Not with this pullback. And it will appear uh, later, because uh, this is like a... a not uh, controlling the difference between the G1 and G2, I mean. But, but I will get into details later, sorry. Uh, just to say that, uh, to close this part, uh, an intention of two stars is the class, no? Morita class of the D2 groupoid. And I also need uh, maps of two stars. So, and, and here for the equivalence relation, I need the, the spans, no, so the, the, the fractions, and a map of two stars. Uh, is given, no, then I have to model out by an equivalence relation, by a fraction, no, as expected. So, first I go the other way around with an equivalence, with a Morita morphism, and then I'll go to the front. So... Can you pull back these two groupoids and not two motions? Sorry? Can you pull yeah. back? Yeah. And in that example, if you pull yeah. back... Exactly, this is a pullback. And in general, a pullback is almost by definition here, no, a, an equivalent. If the pullback... It's an, an, isom an isomorphism, it's going to be Morita, but, it, okay, it's a particular case of this. But, but here you see why the pullback is not enough, because uh, locally it may be different. For instance, a Liguan groupoid, and this will appear to us, uh, is Morita equivalent to a Litu groupoid, where there is no isotropy in the... In the Arrows. The same way that a submersion group is equivalent to a manifold, you can have a Li2 group that is multi equivalent to a Li1 group. Okay. Um, here, just what is GLPQ? Well, you now have a complete definition, no? working definition. Is that different, uh, finite dimensional object? Okay. We can even take the nerve to get the simplicial, finite dimensional simplicial manifold. And then we are going to consider it up to some equivalence relation. This is a category 5 plus minus. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know how much time do I have because... Uh, Two minutes more. Ten minutes? Yeah. A bit less. To finish on time. But well, let's say ten. Okay. <laughs> you talk for 50 minutes. So. <laughs> uh, there was a faster, no? A laser. Uh, here, here. Here. Ah, but this is wet. I don't know if I like <laughs> No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I use the other side to make it dry. Okay. So. Basically, there are two other things I want to tell you. I may need to choose. One are the foundations of why this is going to work. And it's basically because of uh, two previous papers I wrote, one with a. David Stefani and the other one with Fritz uh, and Ortiz. So I will be very quick about this. So 
Now I want to talk about the stacking vector bundles. So now G is going to be a Lie groupoid and a VB groupoid is a compatible diagram of Lie groupoids and vector bundles. They have appeared in previous talks, so I won't get into details, but I will say that the core is the kernel of the source from gamma to E, restricted to the unit, the same way we compute the algeroid. And then there is a core sequence or a map from C to E, which is basically the target. Um, I will call, uh, let's say, P prime the rank of gamma, Q prime the rank of E, and R the minimum of uh, the rank of the particle. Okay. So these are the groupoids, the cohomological rank. It's going to be just a difference. It's the maximum dimension of the cohomology on the degree one and zero of this two-term complex. And then uh, I won't get into examples, but uh, you can talk about the tangent and cotangent BB groupoid of any groupoid. You can see representations. And then what I may need is to say that what the cleavage is, the cleavage is a section for the source map upstairs. So a cleavage is a sigma here. And then this, what, what is this saying? That every time I have an arrow and a vector over the source, this is a point here on the pullback, an arrow and a vector over the source, I'm giving an arrow upstairs with this source which projects over G. So this is some sort of discrete connection, lifting a path, and then every time I have a commutative triangle in the groupoid, I may look at the holonomy of this connection. If I leave the three paths, they may not end in the same point, and even if they end in the same point, the triangle may not commute. But it doesn't matter. You can reinterpret this as one of the representations of the homotopy that Marius and Camilo introduced in this context. So, uh, BB groupoids. You need for this connection to lift identities to identities, which can be always done. What it is not always possible is to lift a commutative triangles to commutative triangles. Let's say the connection to be flat. But BB groupoids plus a connection, they correspond to representations up to homotopy of G on, let's say, a two-term graded vector bundle. And this is this was done by Gracia Sass and Meta. And then something we did with uh, Davide is to visualize these representations up to homotopy as a lax factor into a general linear two groupoid, but that is not uh, over the point, it's over M. In the same way, something similar happens with a Lie group of representations. You can see a Lie group of representation as a map into the general linear group of the vector bundle. Okay? So, uh, representations up to homotopy uh, of G into C plus E, they correspond, correspond to Lax factors from G to GL C plus E. 
So what does it mean? I don't know if I define this, but I don't remember, I, I don't think so, but it's very similar to the general linear two group I defined before. The offsets here are differentials in some fiber, a point x in n and some differential upstairs. The arrows here are a quasi isomorphism between two of these differentials. And the two cells are a, a chain homotopies. So then when you look at this pseudo phantom, you can visualize it uh, on, on three levels, zero, one, and two. And the first ones give you the first tensor of representational to homotopy of, of Marius, which was a differential. The second one is a quasi-action, let's say. And then it's not uh, associative. And the third one gives you the failure to associativity. So now I think I'm time out of time. No? So shut in a second. Uh, let me tell uh, a bit of what we did completely. Uh, most of the work was uh, dealing with the preliminaries, uh, producing working definitions, comparing them to the def definitions in the literature, um, developing more of a solid framework. And then, what do we have? Uh, ah, an extra uh, thing before, which is that uh, I'll write BB. This is going to be. You have to, to, to try out the. Okay. So. We, uh, you can look, given G, a G groupoid, you can look at the category of BB groupoids over it, which are basically BB groupoids with base G and maps of linear maps, linear multiplicative maps. But then some of these linear multiplicative maps are Morita, are uh, weak equivalences, and I can localize, which is in this case, a fancy word to say just that I'm going to identify maps which are homotopic at this level. And then I get the derived category of BB groupoids. And this is the derived category of BB groupoids for one groupoid, but then with a Christian Ortiz, we show that uh, if you have an equivalence, then the pullback gives you an equivalence of categories. That was in the red level of Morit invariance that Camille was telling us, I think. It's a, because to each group, we were not giving a, an element in a set, not even a it's a category, okay? Uh, and then, this is a, an equivalence of categories. So then we can talk, of, can talk about uh, this category as an invariant of the stack, stacky vector bundles. And then, we are done. Uh, our main theorem is about combining all these ingredients with... Uh, carefully, I... I since I don't have time, I don't want to get into annoying details, but I can at least tell you uh, orally. If we start with the BB groupoid, with a, a stacky vector bundle, first we model it with a B, concrete BB groupoid. Then we uh, pick a cleavage, so we get a total representation of the homotopy. Then we see it as a map into the general linear two groupoids. And then you pick a, an open cover of G, zero. So you take GU, that projection G, this is a lax factor, this 
not at all uh, an equivalence. But then you take the general linear of the pullbacks. And if this open trivializes both vector bundles, this is a pullback of little groupoids, but this also is a pullback of GLPQ. Because if these two vector bundles are trivial, it's just a pullback of this one over the point. This factors naturally here, and then to you get a map into GLPQ, but then everything is over rank R, let's say, and then you go backwards, let's say P prime Q prime, and then you go to PQ going backwards. And this way we get a classified map for the BB group from G to GLPQ. And the other way around is a bit tricky also because you start with a with a fraction. And then uh, I want a vector bundle here. But this is not a Li1 groupoid, this is a Li2 groupoid. But uh, again, using an open cover over which you have local sections, you can pull back G to U, pull back H to U, and get a GU, HU. You have equivalences all around here, and then you get this map phi. And yet, you don't have a map from GU, so it's a bit annoying, because this is a little group. But what we can do here, if you look this map, for instance, locally, at uh, degrees 1 and 2, is going into a, an action groupoid, because the, the, on degree, the homotopies are like an action groupoid, of RPQ, which are matrices with the addition. So what you get here, if you continue to RPQ, let's say, and looking lo locally, is a cocycle in RPQ that uh, you can integrate. This is just a fancy way to say that we are averaging uh, the different values of a single arrow here that uh, correspond to several arrows here, but all them go to different values that we can average and get a map from CU, then pull back to a big groupoid, and then push it forward with the same. Sorry if I'm late. Uh, thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Yes, so time for questions. How much time do we have for questions? Uh, Ten seconds and dinner is a great discussion. A quick one now, Mark. Um, so, I, I guess, am I understanding correctly that your main uh, interest is in uh, something like characteristic classes of the exactly uh, of, of, of the category of vector bundles? So, if that's the case, uh, I guess a natural question would be: if you have a stack, right, uh, where your vector bundles are living, that vector bundle would have a homotopy type. Yeah. So in other words, you could right away forget all the differentiable structure and just go immediately to <coughs> Yeah. Right? And then you could try to apply K theory to that, to the homotopy type. I'm just wondering if if uh, if somehow you're you're envisioning this, like if there's a good reason not to do that, you know, like why wouldn't you go directly to the topology if you really want those topological characteristic classes? Well, in fact, uh this may relate somehow with uh, your work in residues for Poisson structures, in the sense that uh, uh, this core anchor map from C to E uh, drops the rank in some singular locus, right? and this singular locus, where it has to be uh, rank zero, rank one, rank two, etc., these uh, are not uh, changeable. They are uh, an invariant of the VB groupoid in the derived category. So, uh, when you associate classes, homology classes, to, to, for instance, in the constant rank case, okay, then there is no singular locus, and the, there is a characteristic class there that already appeared 
in the work of uh, as a meta, but like a more uh, naive approach, let's say. And this gives like a conceptual framework. But then it, when you have singularities, when the, the, the rank drops, you can also have on this singular locus cohomology classes, and they are invariants. Uh, of course, I would like to put this to, to, to good use, to have results in Poisson geometry, in, in to, to give, I don't know, a, a, an Euler class for a, for a stack, etc. But uh, I think it's not exactly the thing that you are saying now that is kind of uh, in, homotopy invariant. I think, uh, at least when I think of homotopies, like the formation on time, something like this, I, I'm a topologist, uh, I think of moving also the, the singular locus. And this is something that is measuring another thing. So, thanks, Matthias, again, and people can ask in the dinner. Thank you.